Hey y'all! Playing Pokemon Red and Yellow with both Nidoran at the same time had me feeling pretty split. So let's continue this week with an underappreciated Pokemon. This week, I'm going to try to beat Pokemon Crystal using only one Remoraid. And as usual, the rules are I can only use Remoraid in battle, and I can't use any trainer items in battle. By the way, if you like this kind of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and check out more of these videos on my channel. Remoraid is best known for being the pre-evolved form of Octillery, which as an evolutionary line, makes about as much sense as Flavor Flav being an eligible bachelor. Remoraid is also the Pokemon seen tagging along on the underside of Mantine, which apparently I don't say correctly. In more recent years, it was revealed through leak beta content that Remoraid and Octillery were both heavily edited from their original designs, which more resembled a revolver and a tank respectively. Talk about bringing in the heavy Calamar Artillery, eh? That explains Octillery's name and signature move, Octazooka, and plus that would make Remoraid an actual water gun. Speaking of water gun, Remoraid gets that move, plus a plethora of other really great coverage options, most of which are beam and projectile based. In terms of the stats, Remoraid is decent offensively, but very frail defensively. So I guess you can call it a glass cannon? Oh, this video is definitely getting demonetized. All right, God help us all. Let's do this. Off at Professor Elm's lab, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Totodile with Remoraid so that a rival will pick the Grass-type Chikorita. Remoraid is weak to Grass, and Bubs' Bayleaf and Meganium will both know Razor Leaf, so it should be the most difficult for us to deal with. Remoraid is a toothy fish based around a revolver, so I nickname ours Barrel Cuda. And listen, I know this is a touchy subject right now, but gun puns don't have to be scary. I should know, since someone once drew a gun on me. Luckily, the ink washed right off, and on the whole, I just want to make some jokes about a fish that kind of looks like a gun, okay? These are jokes, not a ringing endorsement. Remoraid starts off with only Water Gun, which is pretty on the nose if you ask me. Chikorita resists water and barely takes any damage from our pitiful pews, so I resign ourselves to losing this battle and just moving on for the sake of time. And it's not ideal, but with only one move available, there's not much I Barracuda done differently. After beating Bubs, I head straight to the Violet City Gym to take on the flying type gym leader Faulkner. This battle was kind of tough, and I had to retry this multiple times, repeatedly getting our arsenal kicked. The Pidgey isn't a problem, but we speed tie with the Pidgeotto, who hits a lot harder. In the winning attempt, we lose the first two speed ties, but then win the second two to clutch things out. Just goes to show, you gotta be quick to the draw if you want to survive in the wild west. That's not an accent anyone has ever had. Moving along! After defeating Faulkner, I head to Azalea Town to take on Bugsy the Bug-type gym leader. Along the way, I pick up the TM for Swift in Union Cave, which is a nice addition to Remoraid's arsenal. It will come in handy for grass types like Bubs' Bayleaf, but for now, let's set our sights on Bugsy. Water Gun makes quick work of Bugsy's bugs, and Scyther wastes its chance to fell our fish when it misses a Fury Cutter in the middle of its chain. Hey Bugsy, uh, maybe Fury Cutter wasn't such a good idea. After all, haven't you heard the phrase, never bring a knife to a gunfight? Well, then again, they also say the pen is mightier than the swordfish, so who knows what's going on? After beating Bugsy, I have to take on the rival Bubs once again, and I just could not win this battle at first. Even while using the degenerate accuracy lowing characteristics of Mudslap, I just can't get past the Bayleaf's Razor Leaf. <sighs> Alright, Remoraid, time to do a little less mudslinging and a little more gunslinging. Times are tough, but Pi sees a solution. A little bit of training later, and at level 22, Remoraid not only learns a new move, it actually learns three. Bubble Beam, Psy Beam, and Aurora Beam. Geez, what with all these fancy new beams, Remoraid feels more like Mega Man than a Pokemon. Psy Beam makes Ghastly trivial, and Aurora Beam lets us finally take down the Bayleaf. With Water, Ice, and Psychic coverage, Remoraid is kind of like a poor man Starmie. Speaking of poor men, have you considered becoming a member? Next up is the Goldenrod City Gym and the battle with Whitney's Miltank. I tried battling her immediately upon reaching the city at level 23, but that didn't turn out so well. 
So I clear out the trainers on the route above Goldenrod City and try Whitney again at level 26. It turns out this was just the boost in firepower we needed and I defeated Miltank on the second try. Hitting exactly the right level needed to blast Miltank is what I call a bullseye. And doing so to defeat the Goldenrod City Gym is what I like to call Goldeneye. Hey, what's the difference between that game and this one? Nothing. They're both FPSs. Fish person shooters. By the time I reach the rival bubs in the burnt tower in Ecruteak City, Remoraid has beaten the Kimono Girls and received the HM for Surf, which I immediately taught to our fish. So we have the same coverage as before, but now our water move is even stronger. And with our upgraded firepower, we easily defeat Bubs, whose team is complete salmon fodder at this point. And it feels so good to take down Bayleaf with Aurora Beam. I could have kept using Aurora Beam to knock out Zubat, but I switched to Psy Beam just for kicks. Why, you ask? Psy not! Next up is a spectral showdown with the Ecruteak City gym leader Morty and his gang of ghoulish ghosts. Morty's team are all weak to Psybeam, and Remorate hits a lot harder than I expected. Not hard enough to knock out Gengar, though, and we do get put to sleep for our troubles. Dream Eater takes us down as Remorate sleeps, and uh, that's unfortunate. But on the very next attempt, we manage to pass with flying colors. Does this mean that the rest of the challenge is going to be a breeze? Oh, no, 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 no. Not by a long John Silver shot. And now that we can finally use Surf outside of battle, I set sail from Olivine City and head to the Cianwood City Gym to take on the fighting type leader Chuck. Crossing the ocean while hanging onto the back of a tiny Ramorade for dear life, well, that's a fun visual. And speaking of visualization, Chuck should try it sometime. It might help him to achieve his goal of becoming a better trainer. Psybeam blasts his fighting types like Stormtroopers running face first into laser beams, and while Polyrath is missing its attacks, Remoraid's got the target locked in its cross herrings. After a detour to Cherry Grove City to grab the Mystic Water, I fly back to Olivine City to take on Jasmine the Steel Type Gym Leader. With the Mystic Water boosting our surf by 10%, Remoraid is able to one hikeo the Steelix. Very few of the Pokemon I've used in these challenges can say that, and it's honestly impressive. I had very low expectations for Remoraid, so I was thrilled to see it super soak the Steelix. Super Soaker? I hardly even know her! After beating Jasmine, I head to take on Price, the Ice-type gym leader in Mahogany Town. Price puts up a decent fight. Our best move for his blubbering seals is the neutral Psybeam, which is not super strong. This gives Price multiple chances to attack us, but once the Piloswine comes out, it's all over. A single soggy surf surmounts the Sub-Zero Swine, or as I like to call it, landing the Krill Shot. This not only earns us the Glacier Badge, but also 72 points in Scrabble. With 7 Gym Badges in hand, we now have to take on the rival Bubs in the basement underground during the Team Rocket Radio Tower anime arc. His team goes down without much trouble, although we are helped by the fact that Aurora Beam is a 2 aka on Meganium, but only thanks to the small boost to Ice-type moves that we get from Price's Glacier Badge. Aurora Beam is nice, but it's a shame we don't have a stronger Ice move. Oh look! Ice Beam! How convenient! Okay look, I just want to take a moment to address the people in the audience who find the content of this episode objectionable. Believe me, I get it. Things are crazy right now, and I hear you. So let me just say right now, in front of the whole world, I support common sense chum laws. There, feel better? Now it's time for the final Johto Gym Leader, Claire the Dragon Type Trainer. With our newly acquired Ice Beam and the Never Melt Ice Hold item that I picked up in Ice Cave, we're palocked and loaded. Claire ne'er stood a chance, and her Dragonairs all go down in a single Ice Beam. Plus, her Kingdra gets frozen to boot. After the battle, she's so butthurt that she refuses to give us the badge until we take a silly quiz. Come on, quit being selfish, Claire. The world does not revolve her around you. Before the Elite Four, we traverse Victory Road to take on our rival bubs one last time. At this point, though, there's not much this fool can do to stop us. Remoraid wins the battle having only taken residual damage from a poison powder. And it's crazy to think just how much of a powerhouse Remoraid has become, especially compared to how clunky and weak it was originally. It's like the difference between modern artillery and a medieval musket. 
Remoraid is now a finely tuned piece of machinery. And no, I'm not talking about that thing that your girlfriend hides in her bedside table. Here are the stats and moves at the Elite Four. Remoraid is level 51, and while our defensive bulk is lackluster, the offensive stats are great, and the moveset is really giving me high hopes. I even replaced Mud Slap with Rain Dance to boost the power of our Surf by 50%. And Remoraid's damage output in the rain is absolutely explosive. Or as I like to call it, a Chowder Keg. Up first is the Psychic Type Elite 4 member Will. He has a team of specially defensive Pokemon. Most of them we can hit for super effective damage though, but the Jinx and Slowbro are particularly annoying. Jinx puts us to sleep with Lovely Kiss, and Slowbro resists all of our moves and can boost its special defense with Amnesia. Jinx wastes our sleep turns using Double Slap, and as soon as we wake up, we Double Tap it for good measure. I lost several times to Slowbro's Psychic, but we're not out of ammunition yet. We've still got one in the chumber. On this attempt, Ice Beam freezes Slowbro, and I'm able to hammer away at it and finish off the last Zatu to win the battle. Hey, not a bad start! Next up is Koga, the Poison and Bug type Elite 4 member. I heal off the minuscule damage we took from Will and head straight into the battle. And now you might be wondering, why am I not using Psybeam against Koga's Pokemon since Poison types are weak to Psychic? But here is where experience outweighs instinct. Psybeam is a 65 base power move, so a super effective Psybeam is basically 130 base power. Surf is 95 base power, which is lower than that, but since Remoraid is a water type, it gets a 50% same type attack bonus boost, not to mention the 10% boost that Surf gets from us holding a Mystic Water. All in all, that effectively makes Surf 235 base power, and that's almost twice as strong as Psybeam, so I'd be a fool not to use Surf. Koga's Crobat tries to get a little tricky with Double Team and Toxic, and almost knocks us out by getting a critical hit wing attack. But despite Crobat's evasion boost, our fishy little gun shoots a bullseye thanks to its stellar vision. Or as I like to call it, a Sockeye Glockeye. Okay, that one was definitely a stretch. Ugh, guess I'm uh, having a hard time coming up with gun puns. Oh well, must be Rider's Glock. Next up is the Fighting Type Elite 4 member Bruno. After that close call, our Remorate is looking like a tarnished antique. I full restore it back to pristine condition, and now I'm sure it would fetch quite the price on Antiques Roadshow. Speaking of which, let's get this show on the road! Hitmontop leads off, and I purposefully leave it alive by using Psybeam. I know it's going to use Dig, which I use as an opportunity to set up Rain Dance for free. This lets Surf one hit KO everything on his team besides the Machamp, but Machamp actually misses its one opportunity to damage Remoraid by getting its chops crossed. The point is, Bruno can't hang with our stuff. Remoraid is on a whole nother level. An entirely different Musketeer? Next up is the Dark Type Elite 4 member Karen. Remoraid is breezed through this Elite 4 thus far, but Karen's got us jammed. Her lead Scumbreon likes to use Confuse Ray and Sand Attack, and even if we knock it out, we're usually open to being paralyzed by Vileplume's Stun Spore. Oh god, the chances of making it past the Vileplume requires more luck than a roulette, and I'm rushing to be done with this battle. After several failed attempts, I got a battle where Umbreon misses Sand Attack and then uses a pointless mean look, after which the Vileplume gets frozen by Ice Beam. And it turns out, uh, Karen's first two Pokemon were the only ones that were actually a problem, because the rest of her team only lasts a single turn each. In fact, on this attempt, Remoraid doesn't take a single point of damage. And after leveling up, Remoraid tries to learn Hyper Beam, but I decide not to teach it because of the recharge turn. Besides, our arsenal is already plenty powerful, and despite what the NRA might tell you, there is such a thing as too much firepower. Now it's time for the champion battle with the last member, Lance the Dragon Master. I heal up Remoraid, restore our BP, and head straight into the battle. Lance's Gyarados is tough to take down, but it keeps using Flail, which barely hurts, and once it goes down, the rest of Lance's flying freaks get knocked out in a single shot. And that's actually insane. I was seriously worried about Remoraid when this run started, but it has more than proved its worth. Who would have thought that this tiny fish would make such a splash? 
I guess it's true what they say, that big things come in small packages. And with lands defeated, we have conquered the Pokemon League, but you know that the run isn't over yet. I'm always going to consider beating the final trainer Red as the final boss of this run. Unless, of course, a Pokemon is just impossibly bad, which Remoraid is definitely not. I set sail upon the SS Aqua to head over to Kanto to take on their 8 gym leaders to acquire all 16 badges to earn the right to challenge Red atop Mount Silver. The first 7 gym leaders were not much trouble at all, so now it's time to take on the final Kanto gym leader, Blue. And considering the time we've had with Remoraid thus far, I really expected this battle to be easy, and it was. Uh, that is, until it wasn't. You see, I set up Rain Dance against Blue's Exeggutor while it charges the first turn of its Solar Beam. That way, Surf will one-hit KO the Alakazam when it comes out. However, at level 63, our Ice Beam leaves Exeggutor on just a sliver of health, and its Solar Beam leaves us with the same. That was supposed to finish it off, but I guess it's my fault for leaving the safety on. Two levels later, and the battle goes much differently. This time we get our Rain Dance set up, and Exeggutor goes down without us taking any damage. Rain Dance is enough to boost Surf to a 1 KO against the Alakazam, and while Gyarados is annoying as always, it's not as much of a problem. Arcanine does the most damage of all of Blue's Pokémon with extreme speed, but both it and the following Rhydon go down in a single Surf. Well, I'm glad to be done with that. And while that was kind of difficult, it's nothing compared to what's coming next. It's Trout of the Frying Pan and Into the Fire. With all 16 badges in hand, it's time to take on the final Trainer Red atop Mount Silver. We are only at level 66, which is a lot lower than his team of almost level 80-somethings, so I'm not expecting to win. Rather than level up right away, I check things out just to get a fillet of the land. And just as I expected, his Pikachu outspeeds and one-shots us with Thunder. And even when it misses, we don't get very far. At this point for Red, this battle is like shooting fish in a barrel. Even all the way at level 80, the farthest I can get is the Snorlax before getting completely bodied. And that's after getting a lucky freeze on the Venusaur to prevent it from setting up Sunny Day, which would weaken our Surf. Without the Sunny Day, Espeon goes down in two Surfs, but not before deleting most of our health with Psychic. At that point, Snorlax's Body Slam is able to squish the fish. And I guess this battle is technically possible at this level? But it's really just a shot in the shark. At level 85 though, I'm finally able to make some headway. I finally can outspeed the Espeon, meaning that I take it out in two hits while it only sets up a Reflect. With Reflect boosting Snorlax's defense, and it using Amnesia to boost its special defense though, things are tricky and we barely do any damage to it. I use Ice Beam to stall out Reflect while fishing for freezes, and we actually get one on top of a critical hit! As soon as Reflect expires, I use Return to hit Snorlax on the physical side and take down the gelatinous Juggernaut. After that, we win a war of watery attrition with Blastoise and have just enough health left over to take on the Charizard with Surf, winning the battle. And with that, the challenge is over. I am absolutely shocked at just how good Remoraid actually is. It totally exceeded my expectations. Good thing too. I needed an easy run after the last month of absolutely grueling challenges. Time for me to kick back and relax. Maybe make myself a Mai Tai. After all, you know how the saying goes. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. As always, I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. These videos are a lot of fun, but also a lot of work, so I really do appreciate it. There's a playlist on my channel where you can find the rest of my Pokemon Challenge videos if you want to check those out as well. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you'll know right away the next time one of these episodes is uploaded. And if you want early access to these videos and to have your name listed in the credits, consider becoming a member or joining on Patreon. And let me know in the comments what the Pokemon you want to see, and I'll probably do it. Next week, we're heading back to Kanto to beat Pokemon Red using only one Diglett. Anyways, until next time, 